The next measure of position that we want to learn about is percentiles. Percentiles um, take a data set and they divide it into 100 equal parts. So you have 99 percentiles that separate the uh, 100 areas and each of those areas will have 1% of the data set. So let's say there was 500 uh, data points, then there'd be five scores in the first percent area and the first percentile denotes that area and then another five scores in the second percent area and the second percentile will mark off and be the boundary line for that area. Let me draw you a picture. There. So you have a data set. You have your minimum over here, your maximum over on the far right side, and each of the sections, each of the 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 regions has a percent of the data. And the first percentile marks off that first percentage of data. Sorry. So this first line right here marks off the first percent. So that's the cutoff score. And so 1% of the data is less than or equal to that score. Then over at the gray bar, the next bar, 2% of the data is less than or equal to that score. 3% of the data is less than or equal to that score, and so on. And you could work your way along. There'd be 99 different little demarcations. You can see over here, the far right end, 98% of the data is less than or equal to the 98th percentile. 99% of the data is less than or equal to the 99th percentile. So the percentages are in the it's the percentage of the data set that is in each of the zones. And then the lines demark or, or denote those uh, boundaries for where uh, the percentages are. So a good way to think about it is that when you have a percentile, that the percentage that is less than or equal to that percentile is whatever your subscript is. So if it's P4, for example, then that means 4% of the data is less than or equal to that value. Or another way to say about it is 4% is at or below that value. Now you'll notice I'm using kind of two things. I'm saying fourth percentile, so you can you can say it that way, so fourth. You can also say P, capital P for percentile, with a little subscript after it that stands for which percentile it is. Now there are a few very special percentiles that we'll look at a little bit more in a couple pages, namely the 25th percentile, the green one right here, the 50th percentile, which we've actually already learned about, because the 50th percentile by definition is the median, which we learned about in section 3.1. Half the data is below, half the data is above, that's the median. And then the 75th percentile, which is P75. So those three are the most important percentiles. There's something special called quartiles, which we'll learn about in a little bit. Now before I go on, you might be thinking, you know, was I insane when I put the green and the blue ones close together and the purple one farther away? Did I do that on purpose? And the answer is yes, I did. Because the the amount of percent that's in each section is equal. So each section contains a percent, a percent, a percent, right? But they don't have to be equally spaced. Sometimes they're closer together, sometimes they're farther apart. So it could be 1% of the data is in that zone, or it could be 1% of the data is in that itty bitty zone, right? So where the 1% is, um, the, the, it's, being, it's always 1%, but where it, the, the demarcation line falls depends on your data set. So sometimes your 25th percentile will be really close to your minimum. Sometimes it'll be really close to your median, right? It can be kind of anywhere. The important part is that 25% of the data will be at or below that level. But where this markation line can fall depends on your data set. Sometimes it's on one side, sometimes it's closer to the other. It can be kind of anywhere, well, within reason. It has to be lower than the median. All right, so let's interpret the percentiles. Now, if you have ever seen percentiles in your life, you've seen them at the doctor's office because they're one of the things that you look at uh, when your child is growing. You'll take your child in the doctor's office and they'll say, hey, your child is in the third percentile for weight. Now, would that be a cause for concern? Yes, right? So if only 3% of, of children are less than or equal to your child in weight, that means your child is underweight. Um, maybe there's a reason for that. Now, it might just be genetics, right? Maybe your child's just very thin, but it could be perhaps they're malnourished, perhaps they're not digesting food properly because they're 
um, they have a tumor or they have cancer or who knows. I mean, that's the kind of thing that doctors want to pay attention to. They also do it for height for children. So they'll look at weight and height for babies and weight and height for young children. And now, grant you, some children just are in the third percentile. I mean, there's always small children. But there might be an unhealthy reason for why that is, and the doctors want to watch out for that. All right, now suppose you score in the 90th percentile for the ACT exams, to which you would say, woot, right? That's a really great score. That means that you scored really, really well, because you scored better than or equal to 90% of test takers. So let me put it this way, 90% of test takers scored at or below your score. That's great, right? So that means that only 10% scored higher than you, which is wonderful. So start shining up those college applications, because that would have been a great score to get on your ACT. All right, now Franklin Delano Roosevelt was in the 25th percentile at inauguration. So when he was first inaugurated, he was 51 years old. Was he a young or an old president? And remember, this is in relation to the group of all presidents. I mean, 51 years old, you can make your own judgment about whether you think that's old or not. Um, I used to think it was old, and then I'm getting closer to that age, and now I don't think it's so old anymore. But as a president, when you compare him to the other presidents, well, how does how where is his position? Right? The percentile is a measurement of position. And if he's only in the 25th percentile, he was actually pretty young, um, relatively speaking, for a president, because only 25% of presidents were his age or younger. In other words, 75% of presidents were older than him. So hopefully these three examples give you a sense of how the percentiles give you a sense of your position in the group. If your child's in the third percentile, you know they're on the low side, um, and that might be a cause for concern. If, you're, if you score in the 90th percentile, you know you're on the high side, um, which in the case of an ACT exam is great. In the case of blood pressure, not so great. Um, if you are president, yay you, and if you are in the 25th percentile, that means you're on the low side, so you're younger. So it gives you a sense of where you fall in the group in a very different way than z-score does. z-score does everything based off of the mean and the standard deviation. This isn't looking at that. This is looking at the percentage of the group. What percentage of the group are at or below your score? And don't forget the at part. A lot of students do. But it's at or below your value or the, the percentile value. All right, so the most frequent example of this, and I just kind of threw this in here, this is a CDC growth chart. This is the kind of thing that nurses and med people in the medical field will look at. And all this is is a graph of percentiles, and you'll learn how to analyze it when you um, take your nursing classes or take your medical field classes or whatever. But suffice it to say that these are percentile lines. So you basically just figure out how old your child is, how tall your child is, and you can say, oh, okay, my child is in the fifth percentile for height. See the, the bottom curvy line? That's the fifth percentile. The tenth percentile is the next curvy line. And so you can say, my child's eight years old, my child's 46 inches. Oh, my child's in the fifth percentile for height, which means my child is short. So just to get you guys to see where percentiles will show up in your actual life, growth charts um, and weight charts for children are is one of the biggest examples. So every pediatrician's office has this stuff. All right, so let's analyze an ogive like that, but without 10 different lines in it. Let's look at just a single line growth chart, or ogive is what it's called. In other words, a percentile graph. So these are the ages and inaugurations of the U.S. presidents. And we have um, President Obama was 47 when he was inaugurated. Um, approximately what percentile was he in? So you can see I'm giving you age first, and I'm telling you that it's 47. So you can see the age axis is the horizontal axis. So you start with 47, which you're just kind of eyeballing it. So this is 45. So this would be 47.5 because that's halfway between 45 and 50. So 47 is just a little bit to the left of that. Now that little mental calculation I did, that's not a trivial one. You might have to do that for some worksheets. So let me just make sure everybody understands what I just did. You take 45 and you add 50, use parentheses, and divide by 2. I'm finding the midpoint. Remember class midpoints from section 3.3? I'm finding the midpoint of 45 and 50. That's what that tick mark in the middle would be.
So it's 47 and a half. So 47 is just a little bit to the left of that. So it's very important that you be able to find what tick marks are worth for your particular problems. So just be aware of that. You might have to do a little bit of calculation. So when you know 47, you kind of go up to the ogive and touch. And then you take your pencil and you take that point where you just touched the ogive and you go straight left and you kind of gauge where you're hitting on this curve. I messed that up. And it's just a touch above the 10th percentile. So maybe, I don't know, the 11th percentile, the 10th, you're eyeballing this, so it might not be perfect. So um, you, 10, 11, 12, all of those would probably be reasonable answers. Anything lower than that's probably not reasonable. So it looks to me just a hair above the 10th percentile. So I'm going to go 11th. And that means, um, of course, what's more important to is can we interpret this? So that interpretation piece is what does that mean for him as a president? Well, he was actually a young president. Only 11% of presidents were younger than him or at his age or younger. All right, now Thomas Jefferson was in the 70th percentile for age. So how old was he and what would that mean for him? All right, so Thomas Jefferson was 70. So I'm giving you, or sorry, not 70 years old. I apologize. He was in the 70th percentile. That's a very big key. So I'm going backwards. For President Obama, I gave you his age. So you started at the age and went over to the percentile. For President Thomas Jefferson, I'm giving you his percentile, which was 70. So we are going to start at 70, 70th percentile, not 70 for age. So right here. So you start at the 70th percentile and you go straight right. Make sure you're using a ruler because it has to be kind of parallel to the x-axis, perpendicular to the y-axis. It's got to be uh, making right angles, if you will. Don't, don't make a curved line. And then take that point where you just touched the ogive. Oh, hold on. I messed that up. But take the point where you just touched the ogive and then draw a line straight down from it. Right there. Now remember that that line in there is 57 and a half because 55 plus 60 divided by 2 is 57 and a half. So he's not quite to um, 50 to 60, so it could be 58, 59. You're kind of making a judgment call. I guessed about 58 when I was looking at it. But 59 would be a perfectly respectable answer. And so would 58 and a half. 57 is too short. 57.5 is too short. Because 57.5 is that um, mark in between the 55 and the 60. Halfway between 55 and 60 is 57 and a half. You know, looking at this a little bit more, I think it's more like 58 and a half. It's, it's a little too far away from that line to be 58. So I'm going to go 58 and a half. And there we go. So that implies that he was an older president, right? So he was in the 70th percentile. 70% 70 of presidents were his age or younger, which means only 30% of the presidents were older than him, which is not very many. So he was an older president. So it's important not only that you can read this graph, but that you can make that interpretation, that you know that being on the 70th percentile means you're on the high side. Being in the 11th percentile means you're on the low side. Either way, the percentile gives you a measure of where you fall, or where, in this case, President Obama and President Jefferson fall, in relation to the group of all presidents.